I guess it turned out to be a hoax, but it's a huge story of about two months. These two scientists claim they had discovered the burial box of Jesus' younger brother, James. You read this story? Fascinating story. I got to thinking about that. I mean, how much pressure is that being Jesus' younger brother? Especially at holiday time when that family newsletter goes out. <laughs> Dear friends, as you know, our oldest boy, Jesus, is our Lord and Savior. Our youngest son, James, is still living at home and attending Bethlehem Community College. <laughs> Oh, that was a good year for my favorite subject, men behaving badly. Had a lot of good men behaving badly stories last year. Started with General Petraeus. You know, that General Petraeus scandal, that should be a lesson to every guy. I mean, here's General Petraeus, head of the CIA, has access to phony passports, elaborate disguises, has safe houses hidden all over the world. If he can't keep an affair secret, what chance do you have? <laughs> Sounds like some James Bond villainess. Right? <laughs> Hello, I'm Paula Broadwell. This is my friend, Miss Jill Breasts of Plenty. <laughs> <laughs> and what was she? She was his biographer, isn't that correct? I think she was a lieutenant colonel in the reserves. And he's a general. He's a general having an affair with a lieutenant colonel. How's it even work? How's it for you? Good, sir! Best sex I ever had, sir! <laughs> the gold standard of, of scandals, Anthony Weiner, the Peter Tweeter, that guy, that's my hero. You know something, that Anthony Weiner story was important because that shows you how quickly technology moves in this country. I mean, just five or six years ago, if you wanted to see your congressman's penis, you had to get in your car, drive to Minneapolis airport, find the men's room, knock on each stall door. <laughs> Like they wouldn't show us the Osama bin Laden death photo because that was considered too explicit. But your congressman's penis, no problem. He would know. He also had a 25 wallet size. <laughs> but God bless her, Huma and his wife took him back. When would you? <coughs> well, you see how we apologized to her? I guess he tweeted a photo of his penis with a sad face. Miss you. <laughs> We had our own Anthony Weiner out in California, the mayor of San Diego, Bob Filner. I you heard about that. Guy. That, guy. that guy groped 19 women, including a great grandmother. He groped a great grandmother. Even great grandfathers don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, he had the best excuse. He was my favorite. In his trial, he said, he said he had never had any sexual harassment training, so he didn't know if what he was doing to these women was illegal or not. <laughs> Guys, here's a good rule to follow. If you're thinking of doing something to a woman in your office and you're not sure if it's illegal, it's probably illegal. <laughs> <laughs> One of those little <laughs> Then across you had Mark Sanford, former governor of South Carolina. Well, he remember he got thrown out and now he's, I guess he's a congressman now, but that makes sense. That's, that's right. He told his wife he's going for a hike. Goes to Argentina to see his girlfriend. <laughs> really? You have to go to all the way to Argentina? You know, it's bad enough all our manufacturing jobs are going overseas. <laughs> sleep around, you sleep American, that's what I, that's right, you do it right here, exactly, exactly. And I am so glad that former Senator Larry Craig has finally given up his bid to get his stupid guilty men's room conviction overturned. And you know who I felt sorry for in that whole men's room incident? Not the senator, not even his family. The police officer in the men's room. What kind of job is that? <laughs> Sitting there all day with your pants and your ankles and a coffee and a donut waiting for guys to hit on you. Hey, hey, What'd you give the mayor's kid a ticket? How'd you get stuck with that yet? <laughs> then he had that cult leader, the polygamous guy with the 80 wives that was on the cover of People magazine. What was his name? Warren Jeff. Should you read about this guy? The man has 250 children. 250 children. And you know who I feel sorry for there? The middle child. <laughs> it's always the 125th child or so. They don't get the one-on-one. -on -one 250. You know how raggedy ass are those?
those hand-me-downs by the time they hit that last hit, okay? I mean, there must be no elastic left in those other pants. You're pretty much just one. <laughs> then you had that Chinese toy scandal. All the toys with the lead in them were sent. They were uh, sent from China. And, and the man who ran the toy factory in China committed suicide. Committed suicide over it. Stuck his head in an easy bake oven. Oh, <laughs> See, the very small little light bulb was right to you. <laughs> Well, probably the worst scandal in recent memory, across the Abu Ghraib prison scandal. You all remember the pictures from the Abu Ghraib prison? That woman leading the naked man around on the dog leash, another naked man standing in a corner with women's panties on his head. You know what that cost you in Vegas? That's $500. <laughs> and you don't even get the whole hour. You only get like 48 minutes, you gotta sign a health waiver. <laughs> Well, here's the story in the paper just last week. Scientists are now using mice. They're now using mice to help create artificial sperm to help infertile couples. I'm thinking, okay, I guess this is some great scientific breakthrough, but how does this make the man feel? I mean, it's bad enough you can't get your wife pregnant. Oh, now we have to bring a mouse in. You had your chance, fellow. Now it's my turn. <laughs> Some women, something okay. Somebody pointed this out to me in Cosmopolitan magazine. I didn't believe it, but this is what it said in Cosmopolitan. It said, Women, if you're on a date with a man that you like and he takes you to a nice restaurant, I'll get this is what it said in Cosmopolitan. It said, To show how much you like the man, on the way back to the ladies' room, you should drop your panties on his plate. <laughs> see, of course not. Of course not. But see, I got to thinking about that. And see, that might actually work if you're dating. <laughs> that doesn't work once you're married. <laughs> and once you're married, the guy's that's my steak! What's the matter with you? <laughs> Don't throw your bald up on the pants off my What is wrong with you? <laughs> A lot of celebrities in the tabloid, Lindsay Lohan trying to turn her life around after a big cocaine arrest last year. She's working with young girls now. Do you know about this? She started this Make a Bitch Foundation. <laughs> wonderful thing for the young people. And Charlie Sheen became a grandfather. How about that, huh? You thought your grandpa's house smelled funny. Oh my God. <laughs> you know, I had Charlie Sheen on about three years ago. And I asked him about, remember last year we were tearing up the hotel room and the winning and the tiger's blood and all that kind of stuff? And I asked him about that. He said it was a bad night. That's what he said. Actually, he said it was a bad night. And that shows you how Charlie Sheen's life is so different from every man in this room. I mean, here's Charlie Sheen naked in a $10,000 night suite at the Plaza Hotel in New York City with a world-famous porn star who is also naked. And that's a bad night? <laughs> Not to any guy in this room that would have been the greatest night of your life. <laughs> but for Charlie, it was a bad night because like, the other two girls never showed. <laughs> <laughs> And 55-year-old Lawrence Taylor, I'm showing you that story, 55-year-old Lawrence Taylor, uh, NFL Hall of Famer, former New York Giant, he was convicted of having sex with a 15-year-old prostitute. But Lawrence Taylor said after the trial, he said he did not have sex with a 15-year-old girl. He said he masturbated in front of her. So I think we all owe Mr. Taylor an apology. <laughs>